Hello friends, we are going to start with the Bailey updates. You know, the new edition of Bailey has come. So many updates are there. So we have to cover some of the important updates which might be asked for INI set both for PG as well as for SS exams. So I'm making uh, the various aspects and first one, let us start with the part one. Some of the most important updates I have made in this section. Yes, we will start with session. So any doubts you can always post. So these are the new updates from Bailey and Love. The first update is uh, the first update is on necrotizing fasciitis. Okay, the first update is on necrotizing fasciitis. So this is the first important topic I am going to discuss. So related to necrotizing fasciitis. So a diabetic patient presented with the complaints of trauma followed rapidly spreading infection as shown in the image. So what is a false statement regarding this necrotizing fasciitis? You can see, uh, welcome all, good evening Nithya, Nithya. So The most important point is, this is a chapter, necrotizing fasciitis, you all know very well, for the past three years, this topic is coming in exam, every exam, yeah, INI said, NEET, PG, every topic, uh, every exam you are getting this, this topic. And this topic is there in Bailey and Love in multiple pages, 33, 58, 455, 56, 645 like that multiple chapters are having this uh, question so can you tell me which is a wrong statement in this necrotizing fasciitis is usually polymicrobial but monomicrobial with a beta hemolytic streptococci may be seen please remember this is a very important question yes monomicrobially sometimes beta hemolytic streptococci can be seen okay welcome pradosh welcome so dish wash water pus is seen on examination is a true statement the most important update is the point number C. So point number C is a new update. So uh, this chapter is specifically made as a new update chapter. Hyperbaric oxygen is very useful. Previously, we were using hyperbaric oxygen only for gas gangrene cases. Now hyperbaric oxygen has been found to be very beneficial for necrotizing facilities also. That is also a true. Biopsy of facial layer confirms the diagnosis. How to confirm this statement is by facilities is confirmed by uh, biopsy. So very good. Uh, most of you are correct. Uh, Roshini, Velu, Nithya, everyone is correct. It is E is the wrong answer. Second look operation may be needed. Not needed is wrong. So please don't forget this highly important update regarding the necrotizing fasciitis. Severely rapidly progressing soft tissue and fascia. Please remember this is an infection of soft tissue and fascia. Okay. It is not actually a disease of skin. It is a skin a disease of soft tissue and fascia which will extend underneath the normal skin and they damage the blood flow to the normal skin resulting in dusky blue and black color of the skin. So actually the skin is not directly affected. It is a rapidly progressing infection of soft tissue and fascia and the major problem happening is underlying vessels which are coming to the skin gets thrombosed and necrosed. Therefore the skin will look dusky blue and black otherwise it is not a direct disease of skin. First point please don't forget. And you all know very well basic question Fourniers gangrene is one which affects perineum Melanies gangrene is one which affects abdominal wall so Fourniers gangrene affects the perineum Melanies gangrene affects the abdominal wall okay so diabetes is one of the most important comorbidity how to diagnose this very important update is previously it is a clinical diagnosis and surgical treatment is done based on the clinical diagnosis itself now these are the points given in Bailey and Low. What are all the symptoms in this please note crepitus is also seen in necrotizing fasciitis though it is a feature of gas gangrene crepitus is seen blisters are seen a dish water color pus is coming out from the wound on finger probe test fever tachycardia shock coagulopathy multi these are very common old points so this question is again having an important update that is finger probe test Finger probe test is used to diagnose necrotizing fasciitis. Very important update. If you have a necrotizing fasciitis, put a 2 cm incision, put your finger inside. With a 2 cm incision, put your finger inside. And if you put your finger deeper with a gloved finger, not empty, without glove, with a sterile glove, you go inside, you will see the finger is easily entering into the deep fascia. At the level of deep fascia, it will easily enter with a minimal resistance. 
this is known as finger test positive so this pdf is already shared in the telegram channel surgery sixer if you want you can download and you can even see that on the sideways because i am giving all the updates in the pdf format in the in, the, in my telegram channel surgery sixer telegram channel it is available you can download this pdf from there most important update in necrotizing fasciitis is finger probe test is positive but how to confirm even now i am telling you the, how to confirm a diagnosis made on clinical grounds but still there is a confirmatory test can you tell me what is a confirmatory test for necrotizing fasciitis finger probe or all clinical test lack of bleeding is a sign of necrotizing fasciitis because all the vessels are thrombosed dish water color pus is coming out in necrotizing fasciitis most important investigation of choices we have to take tissue biopsy and send it for frozen section analysis which shows obliterative vasculitis please don't forget the vasculitis the vessels are get obliterated that is the reason for the subcutaneous necrosis and other problems so finger test if either the finger test or rapid frozen section is and positive the patient has to be taken immediately to operation theater most important point patient has to be taken to operation theater immediately because the mortality is 70 percentage very important point so the rate of progression is dramatic and if you are not going to treat it the mortality is 70 percent please don't forget and most of the patients second look operation is done after 24 to 48 hours many patients will need multiple debridement and what are the antibiotics given high dose penicillin third generation cephalosporin metrodidal all are given iv okay these are very simple points and new update is very important update is hyperboric oxygen does it have a role in necrotizing fasciitis very important update recently the role of hyperbaric oxygen has been more established with a reduction in the mortality with hyperbaric oxygen only 9 to 20 percent with those who did not receive is 30 to 50 percent so on treatment the mortality has come out from 50 percent to 9 to 20 percent so please remember these are the essential updates from necrotizing fasciitis so necrotizing fasciitis is a favorite question of national board exams as well as aims examiners Apart from being a favorite question, this topic is discussed in five chapters in Bailey and Love. So anywhere this question can come. Hyperbaric oxygen therapy. The gold standard investigation is tissue biopsy, which will show you obliterative vasculitis. Okay. So there is a new update again. Surviving sepsis guideline. So sepsis is a common. See, please remember why we are very much concerned about the sepsis. Sepsis is one of the most common cause of death in surgical patients please remember surgery shock is the most common cause of the shock sepsis is the most common cause of death in surgery patients therefore there are so many updates in sepsis you all know previously q so far score was used and there was also uses usage of uh, sirs many criteria were being already discussed in books a new guideline says surviving sepsis to make simplified the, the because surgeons are very weak in memorizing all the concepts the guidelines are becoming more and more simplified and more simple to remember therefore they are saying there is a latest update of sepsis 6 sepsis 6 you have to do sepsis 6 points in sepsis give 3 take 3 that is a 3 what will you give 3 3 i will give please remember iv fluids i will give three things what are the three things i am going to give the patient IV fluids in sepsis 6 guideline management. What are the three you are going to give to the patient? I am going to give IV fluids, IV antibiotics and oxygen and IV antibiotics, fluid and oxygen. What three you take from the patient? Blood culture, full blood count, lactate. Very important, you know very well lactate is a very important uh, thing to decide whether to go for a damage control surgery or a uh, either to go for a damage control or a yearly total care is decided based on serum lactate if it is more than 5 millimoles per liter we will go for damage control surgery what three you give what three you take that is the question question is very simple so totally we have to give three totally we have to take three very good Lailicha. very good so total blood count lactate and blood culture so these are the sepsis 6 bundle is a new update from a recent bailey so sepsis bundle also known as resuscitation bundle is a combination of evidence-based objectives that must be completed within six hours so what i'm telling you now should be completed within six hours so sepsis six should be completed in six hours in patients with severe sepsis septic shock or lactate more than four millimoles per liter give three take three so the answer is 
blood transfusion has no role in septic shock it is only used in hemorrhagic shock so that is wrong so it is not used in septic shock so hem blood transfusion is used in hemorrhagic shock so the answer is d so give three take three what is not there blood transfusion is not there give three take three so this is a second update so coming to the third update on diathermic current so diathermic current is highly updated again and again comparison of cutting and coagulation in diathermy there is a new table added in diathermy chapter already you know very well diathermy chapter is very very depth in valley and love now a new table is added by them so based on that the question i am posting I'm instead of directly discussing the update i thought of making them as questions so, so, so that it will be interesting for you so tell me true or false regarding the cutting multiple option questions whether true or false cutting as low voltage current can you tell me whether it is true or false yes it is true cutting as low voltage current coagulation as high voltage current coagulation as 94 percent off and six percent on time of current flow true coagulation as extensive lateral spread of energy when i'm using the probe yes true coagulation works better when the probe is held above the tissue when i'm using i will not touch the tissue just hold it above the tissue with no contact or minimal contact that is also true all are true statements so this is based on a new table this table from bailey and Love. so this is a new table in bailey and Love comparing cutting and coagulation current i have given in your material so please understand the cutting and correcting cutting and coagulation currents very highly important update diathermy has two mode of current cutting current works when you press the yellow button coagulation current works when you press the blue button in coagulation current see what happens this is high voltage current with most of the time it is off then it is high voltage so in other ways 96 percent it is off 94 percent it is off six percent time only the current is passing that is coagulation current whereas coming to the cutting current cutting current is a low voltage continuous flow of waves this is low voltage continuous flow of current so very important update so cutting is having low voltage continuous flow of current coagulation has 94 percent off and six percent on those who want an extra edge not from bailey there is another point known as this cutting itself has three blend modes blend one blend two blend three mode so we can change the modes in which blend three we have 50 percent sorry 75 percent off 75 percent it is off and 25 percent it is on this is known as blend three current which has cutting plus coagulation property both are present in blend three current so in blend three current 75 percent off 25 percent on a medium voltage is passed high voltage 94 percent off and six percent on is coagulation so both the both the energy device has a major drawback that is they have a lateral spread of energy so lateral spread of energy is the main reason we don't use it near thyroid parotid and all we should not use this and when you see the lateral spread of energy it can damage the tissues nearby therefore this is more common with the coagulation current please don't forget it is more common with coagulation current can some of you tell me which energy device has no lateral spread which energy devices have no less lateral spread and have a precise cutting like a knife so which energy device has a no lateral spread and has a precise cutting is harmonic scalpel that is why it is known as scalpel it cuts like a scalpel scalpel is one which will have a precise cut so precise cutting is possible without lateral spread with the help of harmonic scalpel so please remember these are some of the important point updates uh, from bailey and love this is a bailey and love update all the points are given here extensive lateral spread is seen with coagulation high voltage current is coagulation interrupted flow of current is coagulation please remember both cutting and coagulation are more effect most effective when the tip is held above the tissue with no contact or minimal contact with the tissue both are having good effect effect so very good very good uh, all of you are correct that is harmonic has better coagulation uh, better uh, precise cutting okay that is the third update on diathermy currents so all the statement in this question third topic number three are true 
coming to topic number 4 this is a very important update i am highly expecting this question for ini set pg for pg exams so regarding the drain placement they have changed a lot of concepts especially in the era of fast track surgery especially in the era of fast track surgery so fast track surgery you know very well they will uh, they will uh, start corals fast they won't keep drain etc based on this concept current role of drain placement following surgeries drains are routinely kept except yes bipolar will uh, bipolar will have a very low cutting so bipolar if is having no cutting property bipolar has only coagulation property yes lateral spread is less common in bipolar but more better answer is harmonic scalpel okay bipolar has a low uh, lateral spread but it cannot cut i am asking which energy device can cut without lateral spread okay yeah, welcome anmol thank you so current role of drain to drain placement the following surgeries drains are considered routinely except can you tell me the answer mrm drain is must or no it is now the drain is must for mrm okay drain is must so the question is asking can you routinely except where you you don't you need not keep drain so uh, esophageal surgery pancreatic surgery you must keep a drain the update is colonic anastomosis no need of drain as per latest update this table so the answer from this table please remember avoid routine placement of drain following colon surgery small bowel surgery liver surgery even gallbladder surgery so in abdomen surgeries in git gastro surgeries which surgery will always need a drain is esophageal surgery and pancreatic surgery esophageal and pancreatic surgery we must definitely keep a drain so other cases like colon small bowel hepatic colostomy you can decide selectively you can use selected cases like rectal surgery gastric resections you can decide whether you can keep it or not you can decide for rectal and gastric resections so consider routine drain placement for esophageal and major pancreatic resections non abdominal surgeries non gi surgery see thyroid breast inguinal hernia no need of drain but in mrm modified radical next dissection mrm axillary dissection parotid surgery inguinal lymphadenectomy hernia repair in all these cases we will do extensive dissection of the subcutaneous tissues so we must consider routine drain in all these cases so very important update where abdominal surgeries where drain is compulsory is esophageal and pancreatic you have to keep a drain okay please don't forget this topic is updated new tables from bailey and law so very important table it is i don't know whether you can call it as an anesthesia question or you can call it as a, a surgery question but it is there in surgery bailey and law as per 2019 guidelines okay society of british uh, bariatric anesthesiology so there is a society see in british they form society for everything one of the society is for society of bariatric anesthesiologist so i think there is a separate group of people now becoming as bariatric anesthesiologist there so as of now in india the same anesthetist will give for all cases so there is a concept of bariatric anesthesiology concept came for western people probably the bariatric is one of the is upcoming common cause of uh, non communicable disease in future it is going to cause so many problems in future so they started forming separate separate departments for bariatric surgery bariatric anesthesia etc a new guideline has been up coming up now soba guidelines soba is mentioning red flags bariatric patients are contraindicated to undergo day care surgery if the following are seen except if the following are seen you should not do day care surgery this is a very simple so to understand this you should as so the most important concept in this session is if you are reading this concept you should have already completed bailey and law 26 edition so which are all changed only you should learn from this if you are if you are learning the old concepts now it is this session will not be suitable so what is old concept of day care surgery what is day care surgery within how many hours they will be discharged can you tell me so old concepts of day care surgery i will tell you day care surgery is a surgery which patient gets admitted and discharged in 12 hours so day care surgery concept is admitted discharged in 12 hours number 1 so what are all the criteria no age criteria american society of anesthesiologist grade 1 and 2 bmi less than 40 this is the medical criteria so this is old concept i am telling you the old concept social criteria responsible adult to take care of the patient for 24 hours house is within 1 hour of the hospital surgery only up to 2 hours 
patient must be able to drink and eat self so this is the old guidelines so old guidelines of criteria for day care surgery and anesthesia used in day care surgery are intravenous anesthesia using propofol is used avoid long acting morphine use short acting fentanyl and alphanetyl so please remember we should not use long acting morphine okay so now discharge criteria when will you discharge the patient in a in a day care surgery these are old concepts from old bailey and surgery six year old edition so vital signs are stable for one hour oriented to place and time oral analgesics relieves pain able to walk minimal nausea vomiting dizziness oral fluids are taken minimal bleed or discharge past urine adults to take care for 20 hours can come within one hour so these are all old discharge criteria most common cause of readmission can you tell me what is the most common cause of readmission old ini said question answer is many of you might be thinking nausea no the common cause of readmission or overnight admission or otherwise failure of day care surgery the day care means 12 hours failure of such day care surgery the patient getting overnight admitted is for bleeding so bleeding is a common cause of readmission and overnight stay for the patient this is old criteria so now come back to the same question so now you can see as per 2019 society of bariatric anesthesiologists means what already i told you bariatric patients this this concept is not there now the concept is even for obesity patients you can do day care surgery based on some criteria okay some criteria so please remember uh, some criteria what is there some criteria is this is soba guideline criteria red flags for whom you should not do bariatric surgery bariatric patients for whom you should not do this day care or poor functional capacity abnormal esg ecg bp low ccf heart disease patients saturation less than 94 so when you when in, in a room air 94% on room air okay not on oxygen 94% or less if bicarbonate is more than 24 uh, more than 27 obesity hypoventilation syndrome will not be present so bicarbonate level more than 27 previous dvt or pulmonary embolism stop bang more than 5 i'll tell you what is stop bang obesity surgery mortality risk score more than 3 you know that metabolic syndrome high acs so high american college of surgeons national surgical quality improvement program another score is also updated in anesthesiology so these are all various things in this stop bang can be coming for your exam so what is stop bang in soba guideline what is stop bang S stands for snoring T stands for tiredness O stands for observed apnea P stands for pressure BMI age neck circumference gender so all this will be taken stop bang stop bang when it is more than 5 more than or equal to 5 don't do day care surgery if it is less than 4 or 3 or 2 you can do so stop bang is each one give 1 point 1 point 3 4 5 6 7 8 of the 8 if it is more than or equal to 5 you should not do uh, this surgery and jale shakma we are waiting for the next announcement because we are going to plan the new edition only based on next announcement so soon we will come up with the new edition so stop bang stop bang if it is more than 5 as per soba guidelines we cannot operate this patients for day care surgery initially old edition says nobody you should operate sab now new bailey has, is saying you can operate in certain criteria this is a criteria you can operate for for bariatric patients so the answer is what is answer in this question so ischemic heart disease patients you should not operate saturation less than 94% you should not operate obesity surgery mortality risk score more than 3 you should not operate stop bang score more than or equal to 5 you should not operate less than 5 you can operate so that's the answer very important update from obesity and day care surgery related topic based on soba guidelines okay so these are new updates so very important basic update so these are the questions which you might be making mistake in the exam when it is asked in the exam false statement regarding penetrating trauma please understand penetrating trauma causing pericardial tamponade somebody puts a knife in the chest it's a penetrating trauma it enters and injures the myocardium please remember how the pericardial tamponade happens because there is a myocardial injury which happened in a pericardial tamponade 
if there is a pericardial tamponade happens because of this heart is injured there is a myocardium which is injured this is a pericardium which is thicker than pleura the blood will be leaking 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 so the question is classical presentation you all know big triad elevated cvp low bp muffled heart sound so jvp elevated low bp muffled heart sounds e fast is reliable diagnostic tools so neck veins may not be always enlarged please remember if there is any other massive bleeding neck veins will not be enlarged so that's a very important point so the most important update is in old editions we used to tell at 45 degree position you put a needle and drain the that is a old update old question we will put a needle and do needle pericardial synthesis now needle pericardial synthesis is abandoned for penetrating myocardial injury pericardial synthesis has no role in the management of cardiac tamponade secondary to pericardial myocardial in penetrating myocardial injury this is a, this is what we call it as update so update means it is not taking off all the info, all the points given in the book we have to chase check out what is changed from old edition what is actually changed from old edition you should know so we cannot re read again the new edition of bailey you cannot read especially if you have completed 26th edition so therefore we have to go for only updated points to be noted so the correct immediate treatment for this tamponade is either via subsified window or by open surgery repair of the heart in the operation time if time allows or otherwise even in the emergency department see even in the emergency department itself you can do thoracotomy and you can repair the heart otherwise patient will die so pericardial synthesis concept is gone pericardial synthesis concept is gone no more it is there and other update you all know very well other update is where will you put the needle you know tension pneumothorax this is updated in new bailey so old bailey was a confusion for most of the students now it is very clear it is in the fifth intercostal space mid axillary line in adults and second intercostal space mid clavicular line in children this is now updated in bailey and love without any controversy it is very clearly updated fifth intercostal and second intercostal for needle icd you know very well intercostal tube is done only in the same space of safety triangle it is done in the safety triangle it is a old update that is not an update just for completion i am telling that so the concept of burns is completely changed in now in management of burns so previously we were managing the burns based on superficial burns first degree that is second degree burns known as partial thickness burns which is partial thickness superficial partial thickness partial thickness deep partial thickness then third degree burns then fourth degree burns like that we were managing the full thickness is 30 like that this is the original method of managing the burns now what is the concept now the concept is concept of two depth concept of two depth so i am i am least worried about this four degrees i am not worried about the four degrees of burns i am only worried about the two depth of burns and bailey says a classical sign nikolsky sign what is nikolsky sign in a burns patient if i push the skin with my finger the skin will peel out in all the all second degree third degree fourth degree burns but in superficial burns it will not peel out that is epidermal burns peeling of skin is absent so nikolsky sign is absent so that is a very important update in bailey and love you can see this flow chart from bailey and love so look at the burn not much updates don't get scared oh so many points are changed in bailey how to read this much of points nothing there are only totally some to 40 to 50 points are changed that will be asked in your exams they won't ask everything which is changed in the book they will ask only some 40 to 50 concepts let me discuss 20 concepts today remaining concepts i will cover up in other other upcoming sessions so epidermal burns is there a epidermal integrity nikolsky sign nikolsky sign means detachment of the epidermis so is there epidermal integrity means nikolsky sign is not seen epidermis is normal so it is epidermal burns no so run a gloved finger over the burn and it is it is now is it slippery yes is it slippery means there is a blister there is a blister so blister formed and thin walled or popped up so we call now classify them as superficial dermal and mid dermal so this epidermal superficial dermal mid dermal are all coming under one category of management of burns this dark color this is light blue color no slippery we call them as burns color we should see whether it is red or white so red means deep dermal which is nothing but the second degree deep burns 
So the previously called the second degree deep burns are nothing but deep dermal. The third degree burns is known as full thickness burn. So now based on this, they are saying you manage the burns, whether it is coming under this pink category or blue category. So now the question is, which is falling under the, the, the assessing the protocol for assessing the depth of the burns is very simple and very easy by simple testing. Previously, what was the testing done? Can you tell me? I, I was, I even I have taken the class in that. In that class, I was telling superficial dermis, partial dermis, how to differentiate using a cotton swab, using a cotton swab and a pin prick. That concept is not there in New Bailey. Cotton swab, pin prick is gone. It is not there in New Bailey. They are only mentioning this method of examining. First to do Nikolsky sign is there in epidermal integrity. Then run a gloved finger. The first test is Nikolsky sign. Second test is run a gloved finger over the burn. Is it slipping? Yes, if it is smoothly slipping means it is just a superficial or mid dermal burns. If it is thin walled or popped up, if it is a thin walled or popped or the type of blister you should think if it is a thin walled blister or a thick walled blister. Thick walled blister is mid dermal, thin walled blister is superficial dermis. And is it slippery? Yes, no, it is not slippery. Then you see the color whether it is red or white. White is a full thickness burn, red is a deep dermal burn. Like that, they have completely divided the burns in a different pattern of examination. Now, why I am telling this? Because in exam, this time the exam, a question may come. You are examining a burn. Nikolsky sign is absent. And running a gloved finger over the burn, it is slippery. And the blister which is seen is thin walled. What is the type of burn? Superficial dermis, mid dermal, deep dermal, full thickness will be the question. So this is an easily frameable question which can be expected in the exam. So burns is now only under two categories because pink will be managed by not by skin grafting. Blue needs skin grafting. That's all. Skin grafting needed for blue. Pink needs no grafting. Just collagen is enough. So pink cases can be managed by a general practitioner. An MBBS doctor can manage. But a blue case needs to go for a plastic surgeon. So that is the point. Plastic surgeon or a surgeon should manage a blue case. So hereafter, when you are seeing a burns case, you have to differentiate the burns by simple test. The old concept of cotton roll and pin prick is removed from New Bailey. Okay. Coming up to the next classification, uh, Bailey has updated molecular classification of breast cancer in depth now. So Claudine low type of breast cancer is characterized by DASH. So this is actually a Bailey update. It is most of you students would have read this in pathology. So this is from Bailey, a new update. Hormone receptor negative, HER2 negative, Claudine low, which is what which is Claudine low type in this. So Claudine low type is according to this classification. Claudine low has hormone receptors negative, HER2 negative, and Claudine low. So this is a new update. So Claudine low and all others are negative. That is known as it's a triple negative with a Claudine low. You can remember like that. Claudine low is a triple negative with a Claudine low. So much, not much uh, details are given about this classification, but this is the updated and new because a new uh, Indian author has written about the breast cancer chapter. He has updated everything about the examination of the breast. Everything is being updated. Let me uh, discuss other important updates in the upcoming sessions. But this is one of the important updates in molecular classification of breast. So luminal A type, all of you know, it is a most common type which is ERPR positive, HER2 negative. So luminal B type actually Bailey has done a printing mistake here. So luminal B type ERPR positive, actually this is positive only. I used to tell B means all positive, luminal B, ER positive, PR positive, HER2 is also positive. Bailey has made a typing error as usually. Always Bailey will make some mistake and will always be a controversy for many, many years. So this is another controversy started now in Bailey. So luminal actually B is all positive. Okay. Basal is all negative. Basal is all negative. HER2 is HER2 only positive. Estrogen receptor, hormone receptor negative. Claudine all are negative. Claudine low is all are negative. Claudine is low. So KI67 is usually high in all cases except luminal A. So luminal A is the best prognosis because it is ERPR positive, HER2 negative and KI67 proliferation index is also negative. That is correct. So very good. So I, uh, I hope you are understanding this new concept in Bailey and Love. This is a new concept in Bailey and Love. New table added in previous Bailey was not mentioning about this molecular classification at all. 
now new bailey has updated everything about this so you can get questions from this molecular classification so the most important update is from gastrointestinal surgery chapters many questions are updated in git so endoluminal functional luminal imaging planimetry this is known as flip new investigation added in bailey and love flip is used for can somebody tell me what is flip used for flip is used for yes flip functional lumen imaging planimetry as a new investigation it is done during surgery it is done especially for achalasia cardia when i am doing an achalasia cardia surgery it is a guide to intraoperative end point of completeness of myotomy please remember it is an end point for completeness of myotomy very good uh, most of you have answered it correctly so this is bailey and love picture this image is expected image for your exam this year i hope you all of you know the image of high resolution manometry already this is another important new update image so please understand this image this is a before surgery a is before surgery b is after poem surgery so after peroral endoscopic myotomy we measure the distensibility index by keeping a balloon here before surgery we keep a balloon here and we measure the distensibility index so distensibility index is calculated by cross sectional area by intra balloon pressure they won't ask you this much depth but please remember distensibility index will be asked in detail for neat uh, anis aspirants those who are appearing for the exam so distensibility index improves from 0.8 millimeters from this picture it is 0.8 to 4.2 millimeters after poem indicating the completeness of the sphincter the sphincter has now become opened you can see the hard glass appearance becomes straight hip like this so this is a classical picture of flip from bailey and love new update from bailey and love functional lumen imaging planimetry so a card score is already I, i used to take this in our class uh, based on sabiston but bailey has updated about this now so a card score is a post treatment response score for achalasia so the response of treatment for achalasia is based on a card score so a card score includes all the above what is it all the above okay answer is all the above so what is this table says no need to remember the va values and all just know that factors weight loss after surgery or after balloon dilatation or after poem we have to follow the patients of achalasia cardia how they have responded weight loss dysphagia retrosternal pain regurgitation so you can see all these are the original clinical presentations of achalasia so what are all the clinical features of achalasia weight loss dysphagia retrosternal pain and regurgitation if all these are present weight loss dysphagia retrosternal pain and regurgitation all are present it is known as eckart score please remember it is known as eckart score we have to calculate the points 1 2 3 for each and we have to calculate this based on this eckart score so and a small update from caustic injuries and always uh, it's a favorite topic for your uh, uh i and i said examiners about the caustic injuries let me discuss a little depth about the caustic injuries caustic conception can be alkali or acid so let me tell the management of caustic injuries corrosive injection please remember corrosive injection concepts corrosive injection there are two types i am not going into that they are alkali acid alkali causes liquefactive necrosis acid causes coagulative necrosis acid forms a scar so it will not cause perforation all those things i am not going so i am going to discuss what all the concepts you should not forget concept number 1 in corrosive concept number 1 in corrosive is never 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 put rails tube or wash Rails tube or gastric lavage like kerosene poison is contraindicated. Concept number one. Concept number two. See, when you are preparing for some clinical disease, you should only know the concept. There is no use of mugging up the factors. You will forget after some time. If you know the concept, you will never forget. Please remember, if you are putting a rails tube, what will happen? Already the damaged corrosive which went to the stomach will come back again and will cause more damage. So that is number concept one. So concept number two. Can I do upper GA endoscopy now? should i do immediately or not the concept now says it should be done as early as possible whatever it is it should be done within 24 hours not beyond 24 hours 
So if you are going to do endoscopy, it should be done within 24 hours. If you do after 24 hours, there are more chances of injury to the esophagus. So as early as possible, do the endoscopy and with endoscopy, there is a classification system known as Zargar's classification. Grade 1, grade 2, grade 3, grade 4. Zargar's classification of grade 1, grade 2, grade 3, grade 4, easy to remember. Unit is the mnemonic. Erythema in the esophagus. Ulcer in the esophagus. Necrosis of esophagus. Perforation of esophagus. So, Zargar's classification of corrosive injury. Concept number 2. Endoscopy should be done as early as possible. Within 6 hours, if you see the patient, do it. 8 hours, do it. 24 hours, do it. But 48 hours, 72 hours, we will not do because there are chances of more than 24 to 48 hours. Esophageal perforation can happen. You will perforate. Instead of it getting perforated with the scope, you will perforate. Concept number 3 in this corrosive injection, most important concept. Steroids. It was one of the famous drug used once upon a time for all the patients. Steroids is no more used either as IM or IV or any method. Any method you should not do steroids. IM, IV, now where you should do steroid injections. Please remember, steroids should not be injected. Very important point in related to steroids is previously topical steroids, they were thinking topical steroids into the esophagus by Endoscopy, we can spray or injection of the steroids, injection of steroids at the level of all those things are no more advised. That is a line you can see. There is a Bailey and Love clear cut line. There is not evidence support to use the routine use of systemic steroids, intralesional or topical mitomycin to reduce the stricture formation. People were thinking we can do that will reduce the stricture formation. No, no, no. It is no more used. Steroids are no more used. Then concept number four. People in those days used to give, if the patient drinks acid, they will give sucralfate antacids. If they drink uh, alkali, they will give counter uh, some solutions like milk of magnesia. No neutralizing agents are advised now. Because why not advised? No neutralizing agents. Acid, alkali, alkalic acid, nothing should be advised. So nothing is advised for patients. So that is no neutralizing agents because it will disturb, disturb the endoscopic finding of grading. Because endoscopic finding, why I am very much concerned about endoscopy, those who are INISS aspirants, you will be knowing the answer. If it is 1 and 2, we can start oral diet. If it is 3 and 4, patient will be on TPN and especially if it is a perforation, patient will be in OT. So start the oral diet, this grading is important. If I give milk of magnesia, that will coat the erosions and it will not show you the proper grading cannot be done. Concept number four. Concept number five in corrosive injuries. Concept number five in corrosive injuries. Strictures, will they form? Yes, they form from three to six months. The strictures will gradually start forming. That is inevitable. Especially if it is an alkaline induced injury, it is inevitable. When will I start dilatation? The concept number six. Dilatation of small strictures, short strictures can be done only after six months. So only after six months, you should do stick dilatation. If you do yearly, you can cause perforation and more damage. So you, you allow the stricture to form, let it be done after six months. Up to six months, then how will the patient eat? How will you give nutrition? Can you tell me nutrition for patients who develop strictures, unable to swallow water is done by means of feeding jejunostomy. So until then, you have to do feeding jejunostomy. So dilatation is started after six months. For long strictures, what will I do? Long strictures, dilatation is impossible. Long strictures, multiple strictures, all these cases, we have to go for replacement of esophagus. Replacement of esophagus is needed with the help of what are the conduits available? Stomach or with the help of colon. So we have to examine the stomach. If stomach is good, after six months, I examine the stomach. If stomach is good, Bailey says stomach is pulled up, pulled through the stomach. Through which root? Pull through is used. Stomach pulled through which root? So you know the very well. Substernal root, subcutaneous root, red, uh, red, uh, posterior mediastinal root. Posterior mediastinal root you cannot use in these cases because that area is 
damaged by corrosive that area will be full of adhesions so in fact we will not remove the native esophagus native esophagus is left there itself native esophagus not removed but we will pull through the stomach through substernal root so sir what will happen if the native esophagus is not removed can you tell me number one they can develop esophagocele collection of fluid between the strictures some between the esophageal strictures fluid will get collected number two long term they can develop squamous cell cancer thousand times risk is there but though it is mentioned as thousand times risk it is very very negligible overall we are not seeing any case so none of the surgeons are now removing the esophagus we leave it as such and we go for a substernal route if stomach is not good we will go for colon please remember colon is the best overall best for corrosive cases best conduit for corrosive cases is colon because the point is the stomach can have a ongoing damage the stomach if there is already a corrosive causing damage they will also develop stricture after some months therefore better answer is colon which is best for corrosive is colon but Bailey is giving wrongly as as usual gastric conduit is placed in the retrosternal root to reach the neck when it is also damaged and cannot be used a colonic interposition is alternate Bailey is saying but most of our super specialty books we use colon as the best so native esophagus can be left in situ as the risk of dilatation and resultant mucosal is very 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 low okay so this is Zargar's update from Bailey and Love Sargar's classification of Bailey update. Erythema, necros, ulceration, necrosis, perforation. That's all. Okay. A new update for PG aspirants, not for SS aspirants. This is already a very basic concept of Sabiston. So, Rockall score. Rockall score is used for dash. So, Rockall score is a score used for upper GI bleed. Please remember, it is a score used for upper GI bleed. We use Rockall score. What are all the scores available for upper GI bleed? forest classification all of you know these names in old edition forest classification blatchford score and number three rock all score what is the difference in these scores forest classification is an endoscopy scoring for only duodenal ulcer only for duodenal ulcer endoscopic classification so what are all the classifications used for hematemesis i'm telling so forest is endoscopic classification only for duodenal ulcer Blatchford is only a clinical scoring for all diseases, only clinical, no need of endoscopy, no endoscopy included in Blatchford, whereas Rockall uses clinical plus endoscopy, that is why this is most important and sensitive score, most important and sensitive score, luckily your Bailey is not giving the values in depth, they are just giving values 1, 2, 3, where will you give 3 among this malignancy? Sparting vessel, liver failure, BP less than 100. So, all these are included in the score. So, answer is liver failure. Very good. Very good, uh, Joshna is correct. So, renal failure, liver failure, DIC. These are the three things which will have score of 3. Renal failure, liver failure, DIC will have score of 3. So, Mallory V syndrome score 0. See, Mallory V syndrome is a self limiting disease. So, they have given 0 points for that. Cancer causing bleeding. 2 points. Endoscopy showing duodenal ulcer bleeding. 2 points. Okay. Circulatory failure or heart disease patient. 2 points. So, kidney, liver, DIC alone will have 3 points. BP also there is less than 100, more than 100, more than 100. Pulse rate, BP less than, more than 100, less than 100 and less than 100. Like that, there are many values. You cannot remember everything, but please remember, Rockall score, renal failure, liver failure, DIC will have 3 points. Mallory Vizar will have no point, zero point because it will not bleed and it will not cause any other issue. They will survive. Malignancy is given two points. Okay. The answer for this question is liver failure. Eleventh question is liver failure. Alps, very important update. Highly expected INI set SS as well as INI set PG. This question will come from Bailey and Love. Page number 1211. Uh, this question is highly updated. Alps procedure for extended liver resection is done for when there is dash alps is done when there is what answer is flr inadequate children old age cirrhotic livers which is the correct answer for this so the answer is for flr inadequate please understand this concept of flr flr means what future liver remnant 
please don't forget this concept future liver remnant for a patient who is going to undergo some surgery for a liver mass or a liver tumor for example this patient is having a uh, let us assume i am giving an example this patient is having a right lobe hcc okay this is right lobe hcc right lobe hcc or right lobe any cancer so i am now going to do hepatectomy so i am going to do the resection treatment of choices i will cut and remove this tumor as such like this so and after cutting and removing the tumor this is going to be the remaining liver for the patient this is known as flr for a normal patient how much it should be can you tell me how much it should be for a normal person how much flr should be it should be 25 percent for a normal liver if it is a cirrhotic liver how much it should be 40 percent if it is a nash liver nash liver it should be 30 percent so this is very important to prevent what to prevent post-operative liver failure our aim is to prevent post-operative liver failure after a surgery the liver should not get failed the remaining liver should be able to support the survival of the patient if the post-operative the prevent post-operative liver failure we use nash uh, 30 percent remaining cirrhotic 40 percent normal liver 25 percent if it is not this much if your flr is inadequate what i am going to do is known as alps that is known as alps what is it alps saying so please understand alps is a procedure for inadequate liver inadequate liver this is portal vein right side this is portal vein left side this is right side hepatic artery this is left side hepatic artery this is right side bile duct this is left side bile duct these are the three structures entering the liver you all know very well and this is the tumor which is going to be removed so now what i am going to do i am going to do in two stages in stage one i will cut the liver with adequate margin i will cut the liver like this with adequate margin i will cut the liver that's all i will split the liver like this split the liver whichever want you whichever area you have to resect it can be extended right or whatever it is resected and during that surgery i will ligate this right side portal vein please remember portal vein ligation of right side done i will not ligate which one i will not ligate the hepatic artery or i will not ligate the bile duct it is just remaining i just did a splitted the liver ligated the portal vein and close to the abdomen this is stage one so stage one this is what we call it as associating associating liver partition see i have li done liver partition and portal vein ligation procedure see simple if you understand that term it is procedure is over associating liver partition and portal vein ligation what will happen now so now next two four weeks you will wait in the next two four weeks this due, this normal liver will grow bigger and bigger because this is not receiving the uh, this this is alone receiving the portal vein this segment will enlarge flr increases now you go for second stage operation in second stage what will i do i go inside ligate the hepatic artery bile duct and remove the tumor so only problem is patient will be very much depressed he will feel the cancer is still there for the next one month the next one month the patient will be roaming with the cancer is there oh i have to wait for cancer like that he'll be roaming with one month he'll be roaming with the cancer this is the answer for this question so the second stage of per procedure is performed one to two weeks after the first stage so minimum two weeks you should take until the flr becomes bigger so the adequate hypertrophy of the involved liver is uh, uh, ct will show adequate hypertrophy the involved liver is resected after a division of the right hepatic artery bile duct and hepatic vein initially alps was associated with significant morbidity and mortality but modifications of the technique has gone has produced a reduction in the amount of liver transected and improved results it is described in 2011 alps procedure is a very important update highly expected need INISS as well as INI set PG exam questions okay PSA screening there's a new topic on PSA screening so all of you know very well prostate cancer is screened in UK for all old men now what is update in that there is a trial on protected trial protected trial is an update in uh, urology chapter very important update in urology what they are saying is they are saying there is 
results of large randomized controlled clinical trial known as protect trial the role of psa screening for prostate cancer suggest at present screening the entire population with serum psa is not cost effective very simply they close the chapter psa screening is no more done that's all okay psa screening is no more done in uk see this uk people they have started to concise the economical spending of money on their patients so one important update is this psa screening is this so prostate cancer they were doing routine screening for all their patients it is now stopped psa screening no more used only for selected cases they have found this is useful therefore a large number of men must be screened and biopsied and treated in order to prevent each death from prostate cancer so the screening investigation should be cost effective no it was not found cost effective psa screening not done as per protect trial now okay that is update so new update again from renal cell cancer the following are indications of nephron sparing surgery in rcc except so nephron sparing surgery is a very very important surgery you all know very well partial it's also known as partial nephrectomy it is usually done for tumors less than 4 cm this is the only old and old edition point so only for less than 4 cm we were doing partial nephrectomy new update is selected tumors of 4 to 7 cm also you can do renal failure also you can do bilateral also you can do all the above is the answer for this question so answer is all the above so the points from bailey and low partial nephrectomy is advised for small renal masses well selected tumors between 4 to 7 bilateral tumors tumors in solitary kidneys patients with pre existing renal function these are the places we have done partial nephrectomy procedure okay so there's one small update in refeeding syndrome all of you know refeeding syndrome is seen after feeding a, a starved patient for long time when you're going to start with the feeding with the total parental nutrition or enteral nutrition both of them will cause increase of p uh, uh, so there will be decrease of decrease of phosphate potassium calcium magnesium all these things will decrease so there is a severe electrolyte imbalance is called as refeeding syndrome refeeding syndrome is nothing but electrolyte imbalance these patients may die because of hypokalemia hypokalemia patients can die so the question now there is a new update a patient is considered to develop refeeding syndrome in one or more of the following seen except in which condition refeeding syndrome uh, is not seen the answer is a for this a new update just go through this table may or may not be asked patient is considered to be at risk of developing refeeding syndrome with one or more of the following or two or more of the following one or more of the following what bmi less than 16 unintentional weight loss of 15% in last 6 months no nutritional intake for more than 10 days low potassium phosphate magnesium levels so these are very important one or more of the following any one of this is present patient may develop refeeding syndrome two or more when the bmi is less than 18.5 weight loss 10% no nutritional intake for 5 days this is 10 days this is 5 days this is 10% this is 15% so electrolyte imbalance is not mentioned here only history of alcohol including insulin medication etc is mentioned here so the answer here is weight loss more than 15% one factor is enough uptake 10 days enough low potassium is another point so this is a very important topic so bmi not 18.5 it is less than 16 that is what this table says so these are not asked in the exam these are uh, new updates just for completion sake i am telling you so but actually the real updates you should know Uh, which are i mentioning the real important updates you should not forget i have shared this pdf in telegram channel surgery sixer so this is the first update i am just covering up all the updates essential for ini set so that is why i could not because the entire update session we did in our uh, uh, our institute we had around uh, 20 hours to 25 hours the entire bailey update so i am concising them to only 3 4 hours maximum 3 hours i am trying to concise so i have completed the first update this is one hour session so i am still downloading and searching for the new updates all over the bailey so whatever i am mentioning the, those updates i will finish before your aims exam so don't worry so please go through this pdf already shared in this channel so the telegram channel this pdf is available go through the channel so nutritional support should be started maximum of 10 kg per kg per day to these patients to prevent refeeding syndrome overfeeding is a cause of refeeding syndrome slowly you should start refeeding 10 kg per kg per day should be started so these are the updates 
uh, first set of updates any doubts if you have in these updates please tell me i'll come and meet you soon with the second update in few days i'm 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 working out on the various updates so definitely we'll be doing the remaining updates soon okay any doubts you have okay if there is no doubts i'll see you on another session soon please share this uh, pdf and the video with your friends so that they also will get utilized it so this is a very important updates please go through them thank you